Hey everybody, it's Sugar Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Fire Red. Alright, in the last episode, we left Pewter City and everything, and so I guess we're going to be heading to Mount Moon next, which is our next destination, according to the Pewter Museum. Let's go ahead and head over here. I fought the last over there in the last video, though, but I'm going to fight this guy, because he's the typical required fight in this area. I mean, honestly, you can fight either of them. I'm just going to go ahead and fight him. He's got four Pokemon, which makes him kind of annoying. Um, if you got a flying type, though, you're totally set for this, though, so you shouldn't have to worry at all. Alright. Pretty much just an A, you know, pretty much just mashing the A button, that's really all you gotta do in this one. And he's got a Kakuna, of course. I think this Kakuna actually can attack you, like it actually evolved from a Weedle that knew Tackle, though, because if, uh, okay, I guess we'll never know. But, um, if you're actually, like, a, if you have, like, a Caterpie or a Weedle and it knows attacks that can, off it can use offensive moves and then it evolves into Kakuna or Metapod, it can still use those moves. It's just that if you catch one of those, you know, and they, all they know is hard, which makes them totally useless. But it's not like they're all that much more useful, even, you know. Eh, never mind. You get what I'm saying. Oh boy, you know what I'm talking about. I actually started gurgling there. Jeez. Okay, okay. Thank you for dying. And it looks like we're going to level 13. Very nice. Um... Oh, Fury Attack. Not bad. Alright, um, Fury Attack. I guess I could explain that in the next battle. Or explain it, like, right now, I guess. Uh, oh. Really quick, you're gonna want to go down here, press the A button right there, and you can find an Orin Berry, which you can give to a Pokemon and it'll recover 10 HP. I believe you go down here. Oh, you don't have to fight him. Nice, you don't have to fight that dude. But I do have to fight this dude. Hey, he's got the famous line about shorts being... Yeah, I'm not here to rip anyone off. Whatever. So yeah, he gives you more pointless tips, you know, if you catch more than six Pokemon, uh, they get transferred to your PC, and you know, because you can only have more up to six Pokemon with you at a time. And then you basically, you know, just gotta switch out, you know, all that stuff. So if you're thinking about catching, you know, like a hundred something Pokemon and using them all in a battle, eh, can't do that. And we have another battle, alright. That is the Pokemon you just caught, that doesn't sound like a smart idea, because, well, Pokemon have really crummy stats when they're first caught. For those of you who know things about things like effort values, and why is that Caterpie level 11? That is treason. I mean, come on. He should have come at me with a Butterfree. I mean, seriously. That's like a taunt, like throwing a Caterpie at their level 11. I also would like to know where he caught a level 11 Caterpie on top of that. Or a level 11 Metapod, for that matter. Uh, Fury Attack, I'm not going to really use all that much. It's basically just a continuous move. Like, you have, like, a really weak attack that just hits two to five times at random each turn. So, I really don't think it's worth it, honestly. But that's just me. I really don't like moves like that that are just really weak and have a chance of hitting, you know, multiple times. But that's just me. Done like dinner. Done like dinner. <laughs> Okay, uh, I believe this girl right here will fight you. I guess we can just fight her for the heck of it. Eek, did you touch me? Touching is good! Ah, uh, she only has one Pokemon, and it's a Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff you can catch in this area, like I said before earlier in the video. So, yeah, if you want to get a Jigglypuff, if you think it's tough. Actually, it's kind of, it's, it's tough like Wigglytuff! Oh. <laughs> I knew I was going to face palm when I said that, and sure enough, I did. Oh, I'm so horrible. But yes, Wiggly, uh, excuse me, Jigglypuff, you'll actually, if you catch one, you'll be able to evolve it pretty soon. I really don't think that Jigglypuff's evolve form is really all that useful, though, but, you know, again, if you're a fan of the anime back in the day or something like that, you know, going for nostalgia, I guess I could recommend picking one up if you're that kind of person, but I don't know. And jeez! I swear to God! Please wake up. Why will you not wake up? Thank you. Alright, please wake up. Thank you! Now watch, this is probably gonna do like no damage. Oh, you! That's Jigglypuff's very annoying ability. You physically attack it and it can make you fall in love with it. Uh, love is basically an ability that. It, it's. Love is a status infliction that'll make you immobilized 50% of the time. But, of course, it can be cured just by switching out, so it's really not that big of a deal, but it's still really annoying. Just do fine with Bulbasaur. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of that. Yeah, we need to get a real man out there to take care of it, because Spearow... Oh, 
Pulsar is learning Poison Powder. I... I guess we can get rid of Growl for that. Poison Powder's pretty good. Alright. I hope it doesn't learn any more attacks after this, because if it does... Oh, of course, yes. Okay, I had a feeling it was going to learn Sleep Powder and Stun Spore on the same level. I know there's several Pokemon that do that. I'd rather have Sleep Powder. Uh, Sleep Powder is 75% accuracy, making it an even better sleeping mo move than the oh-so-sought-after move Hypnosis, which is actually one of the better sleeping moves in the game, though. So I think having Sleep Powder on it will be good. Now it's going to try to learn Stun Spore, which... Oh, oh it's not going to try to learn Stun Spore. Maybe I'm thinking of Butterfree. Alright, now that we're finally at the grass with no more interruptions, I figured now would be a good time to talk about the new Pokemon in this area. First off, we have Knitter and Female. It's a, more of a defensive Pokemon than it is offensive. Its Poison Point ability is really good, as you can see right there, as I've mentioned before. Uh, this one's more common if you're playing Leaf Green, though, so if you're playing Fire Red, I kind of would outrule getting this one, just because it's so rare. Um, but it's a pretty good Pokemon, though, uh, especially if you just Charmander, because it gets a Ground Subtype later on and can learn Fighting-type moves to deal with those annoying Rock-types. But because I already have my Bulbasaur, it's part Poison-type, I don't think I'll be picking one of these. Then next, we have Nidoran Male, uh, the counterpart to Nidoran Female, of course. This one's more offensive than it is defensive. It's basically a polar opposite. Um, just like it's, uh, um, just like Nidoran Female, it does get the Ground Subtype. It does, um, get all that stuff. It has the same ability. It's... Also pretty good Pokemon, really. Um, I'd recommend this one over Knitter and Female, because this one actually has better speed. But, you know, that's just what I recommend. This one's more common for playing Fire Red like me, though. And then last here in this area, we have Jigglypuff, of course. Everyone friggin' knows Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is awesome. Well, its Sing ability isn't really one of the better attacks in the game, really. It only has 55% accuracy, though, so I wouldn't recommend it too much. It, in its evolve form, can take some hits, plus you can evolve it pretty dang quick if you catch one right now, because um, the item needed to evolve it actually is coming up pretty soon. But I don't think I'll be picking one of these up either, though. But, you know, I would not rule it completely. But yeah, Poison Powder, 70% accurate, it can poison the opponent. Sleep Powder, same accuracy, but it puts the opponent to sleep. And as you just saw in that battle, sleep could be extremely useful. Um, does this guy battle you? Thank god. Take a rescue on that tunnel from Cerulean takes a lot out of you. Oh, well, um, there's something I'm going to need to say about that when we get to the other side of this tunnel, because what he is saying is impossible. Go over here, press A right there, you can find a Persian Berry. A Persian Berry will cure confusion, which we actually haven't had inflicted on us yet in this LP. We'll get into that at another time. Just go ahead and heal up really quick, because we're coming up on our second dungeon of the game. Yes. Oh, these LP series, they grow up so fast. Alright, let's see what we got here. What's this guy got to say? Oh, hello there, laddie. Have I got ju a deal just for you? I'll let you have a secret Pokemon, a magic card for just 500 Poke Dollars. So, you'll buy it, am I right? No! Uh... Well, you know, Magikarp isn't a terrible Pokemon, because when you get it, it knows Splash, which is the most powerful move in the game. Well, no, not really. I wish it was, but it isn't. It actually doesn't do anything. It doesn't learn a useful move until level 15, which is Tackle, so it's going to be really difficult to train until then. In fact, the only way you'll really be able to do it effectively is if you send it out there, and then you switch out to something else, and then let that beat it so Magikarp gets half of the experience. Or if you get, you know, some kind of item that gives it experience, something like that, though, but that's really about it. Um, so it's going to be really hard to train, though, but if you can somehow get it all the way to level 20 when it evolves into Gyarados, then you'll get a really, really strong offensive Pokemon, and it evolves really early, though, so that's a definite plus. Anyway, though, uh, with that, as you can see, this cave entrance is much too small for our chubby little character to get through, though, yet he does it somehow, so let's go in! I apologize for having two sets of bios so close together, it's just the way that things happen, though, but, you know, I want to cover all the Pokemon in this area, like, as usual, just so I can keep in-depth coverage and not have to show random encounters every two seconds. Um, so first off, we got Zubat. Zubat's a really fast, uh, flying and poison type. It's actually, uh, if you haven't picked up a flying type already, um, I suppose Zubat might be for you. It's definitely one of the fastest ones, and its ability is pretty nice. Next up, we got Geodude. Geodude being rock and ground means that it takes times four damage to both um, water and ro uh, water and grass, excuse me, which I'm definitely not a big fan of. And on top of that, you also need to trade Geodude with somebody else to get it to fully evolve, which makes it a bit more difficult to train if you don't have someone to trade with immediately. So yeah, honestly, I'm not I'm not picking up on Geodude. Honestly, I'm not a fan of Geodude myself though. But you know, it's got pretty good defenses though. It's just that I think there's better defensive Pokemon out there. Oh man, Paris, this thing is cursed with a horrible type and horrible stats. It has a good ability, as you can see right there, 
but honestly, its only real claim to fame is the fact that it can use Spore, which is a 100% accurate sleep move, the only one in the game when it evolves, but even when it evolves, its stats are terrible, and honestly, unless those things really, really matter to you, I think there's better things out there, honestly. I wouldn't recommend this thing to much of anybody, unless that's really a big plus for you, though, but, you know, it just, I don't think it makes up for the terrible, terrible stats and terrible, terrible type that it has. I'm sorry, Paris, but I just don't think it does. And then here we got the really popular Ultra Rare Clefairy. Clefairy is actually a pretty good defensive Pokemon, honestly. I like it quite a bit. It's, um, really rare, but if you can find one and you want something that's pretty strong defensively, I could somewhat recommend picking one up. The only issue is that it's kind of annoying to attack with in-game, though. It doesn't really do all that much damage in-game, but, you know, if you can, uh, deal with that and you want something to stall, then, uh, this would be a pretty good choice, though.